Be vegan. Make peace. Do good deeds. Hell not reach. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. When I saw the body, the first thing I did, like, I'm not going back there. And I turned around and I left the body behind. And at that moment, I started to see flowers. And the flowers were blooming from nowhere. And it was majestic. A brightly guided life, a near-death experience, and the beings of light. Part one of two. Continue watching to find out more. Continue to make war, cause hell couldn't wait to see you. The friendly Navarrese people invite you to visit with the warm Ongi Itori. That's welcome in Basque, one of the local languages. Blessed viewers, I am Sergio. The peace-loving people of Navarre know that every act of compassion helps uplift the world. Thank you for doing your part by choosing the kind vegan lifestyle. It is a pleasure to have you with us for part one of the two-part series entitled A Brightly Guided Life, A Near-Death Experience, and the Beings of Light. Dr. Ingrid Hankala holds a PhD in Marine Sciences with an emphasis on biological oceanography. Since she was young, she has had astonishing learning abilities, but that is not all. When she was almost three years old, a near-death experience opened her gate of communication with beings of light. In her autobiography, Brightly Guided Life, How a Scientist Learned to Hear Her Inner Wisdom, she describes a wide range of extraordinary experiences that could be considered mystical and out of this world. Today we are honored to invite Dr. Ingrid Hunkala to share her story with us. I live in Colombia, where I was born, and I uh, live with my parents, my sisters, and they will leave us at the care of a maid every time they went to work. And then my oldest sister, who was close to four, and I was only just close to three, decided, let's go play in the patio. And in the patio, there was a big tank. And then we saw a ball and decided, let's play cash across the tank. Then we climbed the walls of the tank. It held about 900 gallons of water. So we put a stool, climbed the tank, and then she sat on the flat surface. I went to the other side where there was this thin edge. And when she threw the ball, the ball fell on the water. And when I leaned forward to try to grab the ball, it rolled on the surface of the water and I fell in the tank. And the first thing that I felt was that this water was frigid cold. And now it was the terror of why I cannot breathe. The last thing I heard before I drowned was the sense of my heart beating in my chest. And I could even hear it in my head. Imagine at that moment of horror, I, it was like drumming, boom, 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 boom. And then it stopped. And it was that sense of absolute silence and complete peace. And it's what I call the silence behind the silence. And it was so good that even later in my life, I craved that silence. This tank was all made of cement and it had a roof. So the last thing I saw when my eyes opened was the, the darkness of this tank. And then once I went into the state of peace, there was a light that came from below. And it was this light that was able to illuminate all the water surrounding. Now there's peace, now there's silence, now there's light. That state of, of absolute well-being. Then I started to see bubbles and these bubbles were surrounded by light. It was when I turned around chasing these bubbles that I saw a body and the body was suspended in the water. And I had the clarity like, knowing at that moment that is my body. But I didn't feel scared. I, it was more the sense of familiarity. 
I was born as a very sick child. And I spent almost the first three years of my life feeling sick. So I didn't know what well-being was. And now I am in the state of complete well-being. Factory farm lobbyists are so powerful and so well-funded, and they do everything in their power to hide the truth about farming. They keep the farms and slaughterhouses in places that most people never visit. They execute huge marketing campaigns in an effort to make animal production look like a happy, nice, benign institution. Moby, vegan. Bright viewers, we'll continue this fascinating story after a brief interlude here on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to A Brightly Guided Life, A Near-Death Experience and the Beings of Light, Part 1 of 2, as Dr. Ingrid Hankala continues to recount her near-death experience. When I saw the body, the first thing I did, like, I'm not going back there. And I turned around and I left the body behind. And at that moment, I started to see flowers. And the flowers were blooming from nowhere. And it was majestic and then all the sense of dimension just disappeared when i was picked by the flowers and now the flowers were carrying me and i put the analogy like it's going back to the womb you're just being carried and just relaxing having complete bliss besides all this happen and is that in just a flash i appear in the maid's room and i'm looking at her from above Oh, that's Maria. She's lost in her radio. And she doesn't even know what is happening. And then in another bling like that, I appear in my mom's path. She didn't have a car and she had to cross all this neighborhood to get to her bus stop. I appear floating above her. And it's the part that also validates the experience. And it's the moment I look at my mom and I said, Oh, that's mom and at that very moment she just stopped and she knew that something was happening at home with one of her babies and I have to say that my mom was a very intuitive person and then she turned around and she started to run and at that moment when I was looking at her I saw a dog at the end of the road and the moment I saw the dog and had feel the desire to be with the dog I was with the dog. And the moment I changed my view and I saw a park, I am in the park. And he's like, this is so much fun. And I started to play a game of going places. And again, in just a blink, now I am in a realm that is made of pure, bright, intense, shiny light. And this was the first time in the almost three years of my life that I felt, oh, I am home, I am home. And it was that sense of familiarity, the sense I'm not alone, that I was being welcomed, with the sense I'm embraced, there was not sense of time. Although I see my body suspended in the water, I didn't have the realization until that moment that that's not me. <laughs> That's not who I am. I am not that body. And it's when I realize myself as a being of light. But up to that point, I was still having a sense of self. But even this vanish, when I experience what some call the non-self, some call emptiness, I call it nothingness. There was no color, no meaning, no label, no movement, no sound. It was space where there was absolute presence and pure consciousness. But at the same time, it was the totality of everything. It was a state of wholeness. 
when I'm in this state of being, my mom finally arrived home. She knew exactly where to go. And she directed herself to the back of the house. And there my oldest sister told mom, mom Ingrid is there and I cannot get her. And that's when my mom jumped in the water. She worked with children and my mom knew how to do CPR for children. And when she got me out of the water, she said that I would like a raggedy doll. There was no breathing. There was no pause. I, I was just completely like blue leaf and all the skin all, all translucent. And then she just grabbed me and I started to do what she knew to get me back. But I was so disconnected from this body. I didn't feel anything she was doing. And seeing just a bling like that, it's like I fell from the tallest building in the world. And there's nothing I could do to stop this. And I was like, no. And I started to feel like I was being pulled, like I was being sucked like a vacuum. And there was nothing I could do to stop it. And then I knew that I was back in the body when all this sense of discomfort and that sense of like, there was no freedom that I was kind of trapped in this body. And I was very, very unhappy when I came back. What a remarkable experience. We thank Dr. Ingrid Hankala for sharing her story with us. And we look forward to hearing more in the next part of this series. For more information on A Brightly Guided Life, please visit IngridHunkala.com. If you witness the agony of the animal people in the slaughterhouse, you'd want to end it. Help them. Be vegan. Noble viewers, thank you for your devoted company today. Join us again on Saturday, November 19th for part two of A Brightly Guided Life, a near-death experience and the beings of light. Coming up next is Vegan the solution to steer away from the pandemic spiral, part four of four, right after noteworthy news here on Supreme Master Television. May we always radiate in love and harmony. Be vegan, make peace, do good deeds, hell not reach. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash ul. Nos programmes offrent plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprimastertv.com baroblique schedule et suprimastertv.com baroblique ul. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprimastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprimastertv.com barra inclinada ul. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprimastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprimastertv.com barra inclinada ul. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprimastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprimastertv.com barra inclinada ul.